Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who haven't been here before, hi, I'm Lori Hill, and on this channel we talk about celebrities, products that they use, plastic and cosmetic procedures, and lifestyle. So if that sounds good to you, then make sure to subscribe. Now I have a lot of new celebrity analysis videos coming up in the following weeks and months, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on them. Now thank you to everyone who has been watching my other types of videos, ones about product recommendations, Amazon recommendations, and my skincare and hair routines. I really thank you for watching those and supporting those. It really helps the channel so much, and I will continue to do those videos, but I did promise that I would stay doing the celebrity analysis videos, so here they are, as promised. Now, everything I say in this video is my opinion only. I have no receipts or proof that the celebrity has had any of the procedures done that we talk about them having. Never use these videos as a way to shame or expose a celebrity. Now, let's talk about the beautiful and talented Emily Blunt. Now, Emily is so interesting to me because she does appear to be 100% natural, similar to Jennifer Lawrence, who everyone thought was completely natural and plastic surgery free. Emily is also a great example of that. Until you see a side-by-side -side before and after photo of Emily, you really don't see many differences to her face. Her alleged plastic surgery has been very well done and done in such a subtle way that it's pretty easy to miss. You really can't see the plastic surgery or cosmetic procedures unless you go photo by photo, year by year. You really have to have a knowledge base of the kind of intricate plastic surgery procedures that are out there beyond just fillers and Botox. Now with Emily, there aren't a lot of early photos prior to her entering her 20s. So keep that in mind when you see some of the comparison photos. You may notice slightly different angles in the before versus the after photos. This is only because there weren't many before photos to choose from. Emily Blunt was born in London on February 23rd, 1983 to her parents, Joanna Mackey, who was a former actress, and her father, Oliver Blunt, who was a barrister. I think Emily shares a lot of common facial features with her mother, but if you look at Emily's mid-face, it looks more like her father's. In particular, the nose and the surrounding mid-face area looks more like her father's. Emily is known for such movies as The Devil Wears Prada, which I first saw her in and thought she was so hilarious. Her comedic timing was perfect. The Edge of Tomorrow, where she starred alongside Tom Cruise as a skilled warrior in a battle against alien invaders. And she's also received SAG nominations for her performance in A Quiet Place and six Golden Globe nominations for Mary Poppins Returns, in which critics say that she really embodied Mary Poppins' entrancing spirit. Most recently, Emily was in the hit movie Oppenheimer, where she plays Catherine Kitty Oppenheimer, the wife of the father of the atomic bomb. Something interesting about Emily is she used to stutter as a child. From the age of seven, Emily began having difficulties with stuttering. She credits a school teacher for helping her manage the stutter through acting and was able to overcome stuttering by age 14. She went on to sit on the board of directors for the American Institute for Stuttering. Emily says, I see it as a really important part of my world to keep talking about and keep illuminating this disability because I don't think there's enough representation of it and there's millions of people around the world who struggle and suffer from it. Let's talk about Emily's natural beauty traits. I think Emily's defining and most beautiful feature are her sparkly almond-shaped eyes. I also love Emily's lips. They're beautifully shaped and equally proportioned. Now, Emily's skin is also stunningly beautiful with a rosy undertone, and her skin has glowed throughout her career. I think she takes great care of it. Now, I believe that Emily's earliest possible plastic surgery procedure was a rhinoplasty. Emily starts out with a strong nose, and there are a few early photos of it where you can definitely notice her nose is more on the stronger and wider side. Now, when we look at the after photo, the nose has clearly been made smaller. Starting at her nose bridge, I see that it's been made narrower, and her nose tip has been made smaller and less prominent. 
take a look at Emily's nostrils. They used to have a flare to them that is now diminished. The nostrils have likely undergone a base reduction. This is where a section of skin is removed from each nostril and then the two sides are stitched back together. Now this nose job is quite subtle but very well done. But there is a tell to this nose job and it's right here where the shaving of this area has indented very slightly, giving away that some work has been done to the nose. Another small but important giveaway is the space between Emily's nose base and her upper lip. It has gotten larger. This is usually a sign of a rhinoplasty being done. Now between 2009 and 2013, there may have been a second refinement to her nose. It was incredibly hard to find the exact angle and facial expression for the before and after, but I see a thinner bridge and a narrower nose appearance overall. Now also, in between 2009 and 2011, I see a large change to Emily's appearance. The first is to her cheeks. I see much larger cheeks that take up more of Emily's petite face in particular from the three quarters point of view. We see that the cheek starts right below her eyes and goes past her mid face. Now this is a change from prior as Emily used to have a more sunken in look at the mid face. It looks like Emily may have had fat grafts placed to her face. It looks like she had fat grafting to her cheeks and it looks like the fat was also added to her upper eyelids as well as her temples. Take a look at how much wider her face looks at the temples now. I also see that Emily has began to get Botox to multiple areas of her face, noticeably to her forehead lines, which used to be more prominent and are now gone. At some point, Emily had an upper blepharoplasty. The upper eyelid is no longer lax and laying on top of her makeup space. We now see more of her actual upper eyelid. And her eyes look a bit more rounded out. I think an upper blepharoplasty was likely performed. This gave Emily more of a wide open eye look as well as more upper eyelid show. Jumping over to 2016 now, as there was a pause during the time Emily had her two children, I don't see any changes to Emily's face. Now between 2017 and 2018, there's a big change to Emily's face. It looks like Emily has had filler to her cheeks, jaw, and other areas of volume loss to her face. When filler is injected in such large volumes, it's usually to stave off a facelift. Between 2022 and 2023, a lot of people were noticing changes to Emily's face, which had them questioning if she's had plastic surgery. Whenever this happens, it's usually because someone has gotten a big, big procedure done to themselves that is quite obvious and isn't meant to be subtle. Let's take a look at Emily's face. The shape of her face has changed pretty drastically. She has extreme widening at the temples and now very large cheeks. It looks to me like Emily has gotten cheek implants. Now, the reason I think it's cheek implants is because the look of Emily's cheeks are much more structured than prior when I believe she had fat transfer. This is definitely the look that cheek implants gives you in my opinion. We also see some prominence here, which is usually also a giveaway of getting malar cheek implants placed. Now in regards to Emily's lips, I think that she started getting subtle lip filler around 2018 and this has continued till 2023, which is present time as of this video. Now taking a look at Emily's teeth, it looks like she had cosmetic dentistry done with either veneers or crowns or both. I see at least six dental veneers may have been placed and the rest of her teeth whitened. Now, really quickly, you guys, this isn't a sponsorship. I want to tell you about Pearl Recovery Retreat and Wellness, which I have stayed at personally and was incredibly well taken care of there. They're located in the heart of Los Angeles. Their staff has over 20 years experience of post-operative care and are fully licensed and nurse owned. 
Once you arrive at the posh hotel they're located in, they take care of you from there, driving you to your surgery and picking you up afterwards. They also remain in full contact with your surgeon during your aftercare, so they know exactly what your personal aftercare entails and involves. They provide you with meals, medication delivery, and administration, so you're not at risk of taking the same pill twice. They monitor your blood pressure and vitals throughout the night as well. They even held my hand and watched television with me. They also have this full list of other services. They customize each individual patient's recovery to their needs and are willing to go above and beyond. So if you've been planning or thinking about having plastic surgery in Southern California and need to stay at an amazing recovery retreat, I highly recommend Pearl Recovery Retreat and Wellness. Click the link down below in my description box to go to their website and read more about all the services that they provide. Now, as far as Emily's body, I don't see any obvious plastic surgery work to her body. Let's add up how much it costs to look like Emily Blunt. All prices are based at the high end of the price range. First rhinoplasty, $15,000. Second rhinoplasty, $15,000. Fat transfers to the face, $20,000. Dermal filler to the cheeks and multiple areas, $25,000. Botox for multiple years, $30,000. Custom cheek implants, $15,000. Upper blepharoplasty, 10,000. Lip filler, 20,000. Six veneers or crowns, 24,000. Total cost, $174,000. Now Emily has taken great care of her skin. Here are a few of Emily's favorite skincare products. Emily really loves these gold energizing eye recovery masks by Shantikai. They contain 24 karat gold and have antioxidant and soothing properties. She also enjoys the Kat Berkey Vitamin C Intensive Face Cream. This is available on Amazon and it's pretty reasonably priced. It's a vitamin-rich moisturizer with vitamin C that brightens the skin, improves elasticity, and nourishes without feeling greasy. It's suitable for sensitive skin. Kat Berkey Eye Cream, again, pretty reasonably priced. This product contains caffeine, vitamin C, and vitamin E. It deeply conditions and soothes and hydrates the delicate eye area. Give this one a try if you're looking for an inexpensive cream that has rave reviews. Emily's Facialist uses Gua Sha on her, which is an Eastern facial sculpting technique. I also practice this myself, and it helps smooth facial expressions and contours the face. And you can do it at home as I do with a Gua Sha tool. I've linked to the one I use below, as well as a few other highly rated ones. Her Facialist also does lymphatic facial massage. Lymphatic massage is another technique you can do at home. Emily's Facialist uses a facial oil for this. I also do this at home using the Viasance Squalene Oil, which I've talked about in the past, and it's perfect for lymphatic facial massage. I've linked that below as well. Last but not least, Emily uses an LED mask. Now with this one, consistency is key, so it's recommended to use it at least three times a week for best results. I've linked both LED masks that I use at home. Let me know what you think of all of Emily Blend's changes. Remember to be kind or neutral. She is a human being and subject to all of the same insecurities as all of us. Up next are my skincare and product videos, or you can go watch and binge my celebrity analysis videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>